In the following tutorial, we're going to start our Pong Scenes um, game. So let's go ahead and open up the Pong Scene start file. And you'll notice that we have our two scenes already. We can access these two scenes either place. But you do need to bring up your scene panel because we'll be using that in a few minutes. Anyway, if you look at our first scene, you'll notice that we have a title of our game, we have the Let's Play, and we have a button already here. And this button um, already has the code on it to be able to, to do the hover over effects. And we have a little character here, and we'll be using this character multiple times during the movie. Um, he's going to be a repeating um, character that we use. Now, I grabbed this from Microsoft Clip Art, but um, of course you could create your own character if you want. Um, you just want to make sure that the character that you bring in is going to be something that you want to use, of course, and that you want to be able to animate with. Because I'm actually using this baseball character a couple different ways. In the next scene, you'll notice that he's got a bat, and he's got a helmet on and everything else. So, um, looks a little bit different there, but uh, basically the same character. Anyway, um, what we're going to do first is just make our file look a little bit nicer. You'll notice that I have some text here, but wouldn't it be nice if the text looked a little bit better? So make sure that you're using some sort of idea of branding for your um, project and, and give a little bit nicer look to even things like the text. Now we can also scale that up a little bit. As I scale up the text, you may notice that large text has kerning issues, and this is a common problem with text. And so you can double click on your text and go inside of it, and if you hold down the Control and Alt key together, then you can use your left arrow and your right arrow to kern that text a little bit closer or further away as needed. You'll notice that the A and the um, G were pretty far apart, and the M and the E were pretty far apart. And I just want to make that a little bit closer and, and see if that kerning is a little bit better that way. I might even kern the A and the M away from each other, just a tiny bit. So that looks a little bit better. Kerning is one of those things that takes a little bit of practice, of course, to be really good at. Now, you'll notice that I have the title of the game. Um, and, of course, it, it should say something about baseball maybe in the title here. But um, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, change this a little bit just to make it even a little bit more exciting by removing the G from there, the game, and pasting it um, underneath and maybe scaling this text back a little bit, maybe rotating it a tiny bit. And maybe this one can be a little bit larger. And maybe it could even be a different color, because it'd be nice to have something look a little bit nicer, a little bit different color than, than the other. So there's the title of the game that I've got there now. Um, I can even scale that down just a tiny bit more, because I really want the title of the game to, to really come out. So there's my title that I've got. Now, um, anytime we have a graphic like this that we want to reuse, it's a really good idea for us to put it inside its own symbol. So I'm going to right-click convert to symbol and this is going to be my text title background and I'm gonna go inside of that because one of the things that I'm gonna do is animate this and you'll remember that animating text is is not always a good idea because it kind of um, gets a little crunchy so since this is the title as well and I really don't want it to change throughout the game I'm gonna go ahead and break this apart so that inside this background um, file is actually just shape. That way when I go back to the main movie or the main um, scene, you'll notice that I have that um, it's it's live, not live text anymore. Anyway, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'd like to add a drop shadow or something like that to it. Um, so I'm going to go to my display menu, filters at the below here, add a little drop shadow, make it distance zero, quality medium, um, you can do, you know, of course, different things yourself. But I also want this drop shadow to be anywhere that I use this text. So I'm going to also convert this to a movie clip. So I'll convert to symbol, and this will be my text, title, shadow. And that way, I will know that any time that I use this particular title, it will already have that shadow on it. 
So I'm going to actually copy this title into the scene too, so that I have it up here at the top. So I can copy this text, go to scene two, make sure that I get on the background layer, because I'm not going to animate it in this scene, and paste it and move it up to where it needs to go. So of course we have to be conscientious of how we set up that title so it will fit um, here in our scene, oops, the right way. But that seems to work pretty well there, and even though it goes over the line a little bit, I think that that will work. I think that will work really nice, and we're just going to make sure it's fairly nice and centered. Anyway, back in scene one, I also do want to make sure that the other text that I have is given that same sort of look, and the same sort of treatment. That way it looks a little bit nicer. Here, title of the game needs to be maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. And uh, that looks nice. Now, we are going to do one other thing to this, and that is that we're going to animate this text. So we need to make sure that this text is on separate layers. Now, the text that I have here is also, by the way, um, right now just live text. And we're going to animate this, so it's probably a really good idea that we put it inside of its own movie clip. We can adjust our kerning a little bit as well as needed, because every different font has different kerning issues. But I'm going to take this font, convert it to a symbol, and this is going to be the text. Let's play. And notice that I put my text all has text, and that way you can see all my text items appear in the library together. And of course I could put them into a folder together. That way it's even more organized than, than the other way than just having them in the list, but it's kind of a nice idea. Anyway, now that I've got my two text items here, I need to separate these on layers. So if I select both, I can right click and choose Distribute to Layers, and you'll see that it automatically makes layers for the two text items, and it even automatically makes those two layers have um, the title that we have from the library. So that works pretty well. You'll notice the text anims layer now is blank. There's nothing really on it. So we can actually delete that because we really only need it for the three layers, the title of the game, let's play, um, and the sample. And then if we wanted to animate this guy coming in, we would probably need to separate him onto its, his own layers as well. So we could um, right click, distribute to layer, and you'll see it made a layer with him we need to make that layer back up to the top. So we now have our layers for our button, our text items, and our player, so that we can animate all four of those separately. Now, once we've got that set up, we can actually duplicate this for our end scene. So I'm going to go to my scene panel and click on the duplicate scene after I've clicked on scene one. And it's made a copy of it. And now I can drag scene two above scene one, and we can actually rename our scenes. The first one is going to be start. Then we're going to have game one. And we're going to be talking about the game cycles later. And then our last one is end. Now our end scene, of course, looks a little different than our beginning, or should look a little different than our um, beginning scene. So um, I'm going to change a couple things. I'm going to remove the player that I have there and give it a different player because I have a player with an award. So I can already, I can put a different player in there. I can keep my title of the game. I can keep it where it was, doesn't really matter. And um, for the let's play, I can actually change this. So here's a trick. I'm gonna break apart and that gets me back to live text. Now I can change the text play again and now I can create my new text item from this convert to symbol this will be text play again and you'll see it was very easy for me to take the original text item and make it into a new text item just by breaking it apart and then making a new symbol and if you do look in your um, library you'll notice that we do have two different text items for the let's play and play again. So we didn't double click on the let's play and change the text inside because that would have